uh, last summer I spent five months, almost six months, in the RV. Four of them were camping and one and a half of them um, just full-time RVing. And, <laughs> and it was really expensive and it frightened the hell out of me because I realized I could not afford this master plan <laughs> I had developed. And I freaked out. Um, but I'm in a different position this year. So I have to be able to live within my means. And I've never been good at budgeting. I mean, I'm good at... I had an accounting minor. I'm good at the number part. I can figure out the budget. I'm just not good at living up to my budget. Because most of the time, my buying is impulsive. So, um, I'm not there yet. My budget is about $800 a month right now. So, that's not very much money. And this last summer when I was camping, I was spending about $1,500 a month, twelve dollars to $1,500. And I felt like I was boondocking a lot, but staying in low-priced um, places. But I was moving often, and I was, I don't know what the hell I spent my money on, but it, I couldn't, you know, it was just not feasible. So right now, I'm, I spent twice as much as I could afford. trailer which was my financial backing and so I have a little bit of money in my pocket but that money has to last for a long time <laughs> I'm hoping it lasts for a long time like my life and therefore I can't um, rely on it for too long it's not that much money but I also well let me go through it with you really a raw accounting paper pen I would love to do it in Excel but I haven't gotten any place to Microsoft I own the damn thing on this new computer of mine so I have to download it <coughs> anyway pencil and paper works now I still have one more day but um most of these figures will be somewhat accurate. I ended up spending, or will have ended up spending by tomorrow, $2,000 this month. Well, obviously, if my budget is $800, i am way over. But I knew that some of that was going to be um, the startup costs and things I needed for the RV to get it running the way I need it, functioning the way I need it to function. So I knew that, so I wasn't too shocking. So I'll just go through what the numbers were. For camping, for staying in a campground, I spent $244 this month. So that's 14 days worth of camping, 14 days of free camping. Well, free being not paying for a campsite. To stay at Walmart is not necessarily free. <laughs> it cost me about a hundred bucks a night because I went in there and bought stuff. Um, so that brings me to the second category is food. I spent four hundred and ninety-two dollars on food. Now you saw my larder. <laughs> Where is all that food? Well, in the very beginning. Um, you know, I went out to dinner, I took my kids out to dinner, um, so meals for others of that $492, meals that I spent on others was about $150, and that's, that's okay because it was a going away thing, but I also say some of that was eating out on my, for myself, so I got Chinese food one night, which wasn't very good. Um, I try to avoid um, 
McDonald's. Even if 150 well, of that was taking people out to dinner, I still spent too much money on food, and I need to, to watch that this month. So, going forward this next month, I'm not planning on eating out at all. Period. I have so much food in here, I need to start eating it up. And yet, I'm going to stop at the grocery store tomorrow. I spent, although I spent $2,000, for camping food, gas, and entertainment, miscellaneous cash, and ice. The combination of what I spent this month was $1,086, which is still about $300 too much. As I said, if I back out the money I spent entertaining others, $921. So I'm just, I think for this month, if I can keep the camping at about 250 and food down to about 250 gas at 200 and the rest entertainment and miscellaneous things I need to buy, uh, I should be able to be within budget. The hard part will be keeping the camping down. Yeah, the biggest issue, uh, so that's all the outer stuff. The other issue is the weather. It's just been hot. <laughs> it's like August. I've never known Colorado to be so hot, but then when you're living outside all the time, um, you might notice it more, I don't know. But I know it's been hot. When it gets hot inside, it's just miserable. And that's one of the disadvantages of boondocking, I feel. At least where I've been ducking is it? I don't feel like I'm comfortable sitting outside very much. Excuse me, when it's really hot like that, you want to sit outside. There's a nice breeze today. I'm going to go out in a little bit. But, um, boom docking, I feel like I need to be hiding. And that's something I guess I'll have to work with as I go forward and try to boondock more. I'm sure maybe it's the parking lot thing that just makes me feel and like I shouldn't, I don't belong there. But let me tell you, I started thinking about it and I paid for that spot dearly. I paid for those spots. <laughs> so I don't feel, it's just kind of odd. I'm still getting used to it. So a lot of that, the outer, I'll start to talk a little bit about the inner, the inner world has been over this month, and I'm really surprised at how comfortable, at least right now, I'm feeling pretty comfortable, I'm not freaked out driving, um, I've been driving in traffic, and I still don't want to drive on highways, I can't go 75 miles an hour, but we drive out to, uh, prairie and back off the straight. It's really windy and um, I handled the RV well and you know it feels good. Um, I haven't had a lot of free time. So boredom or depression or The, the hidden issues of one's life that comes out when you're quiet for a long time and alone um, hasn't emerged yet. So maybe in this next month. I mean, I hope it does. It's, um, part of the purpose of this. One is to survive economically. The other is to grow spiritually. And I haven't had as much time to be working on the spiritual part as I think I should, but um, uh, being alone so much has a positive effect on that process. 